Virtual desktops are a huge help for productivity and very easy to set up in KDE Plasma. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to add more virtual desktops to your Plasma setup, as well as some tips and tricks that I find very helpful for them. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Bash and this is the Configuring KDE Plasma series. If you missed the first one, I'll have a link to it at the very end. This is part two and we're gonna jump right into virtual desktops. I find the easiest way to get to most of these menus, you press the super key and then start typing. In this case, we'll just type in virtual and we'll get to virtual desktop. And this is the screen that will come up. So this is Fedora 36 and this is what it looks like. By default, for some reason, there's no virtual desktops, but we're gonna fix that. There are two options here that are really gonna matter for what you're wanting to do. If you just need to add a virtual desktop on the same row, we can go down here and click add and we'll see a new desktop show up here. I can rename it if I want to or leave it, leave it that way for now. You can also come over here and change the row, number of rows to up to four rows, it looks like. No, even more than that. I don't know why you'd want to go to four rows. I'll show you why, but I'm gonna add two rows for now just to see what this looks like. Four rows seems a bit extreme because this bar just seems to stay so small most of the time. I'm gonna add one more here. So now we have two on the first row and one on the second row. So when I hit apply, what's gonna happen is a little symbol is gonna appear over here. We're gonna talk about all these options next after we take a look at what this actually does. So if I hit apply, now you'll see down here and I think I can, I think I can do this, yeah. So you'll notice right down here, there is a little, uh, little icon. You'll see three of them, two in one row and one in the bottom. That's because I have two in one row and one in the bottom here. And let me get rid of my magnifying now. There we go. We'll talk about that in another video. And if I click on this, you'll notice I go over to another desktop where it's just blank. If I click on this one down here, I'll have another desktop. And for the moment, we're just gonna bring this up here just so that it can be kind of hanging out here. But let's go back to our main window. So now we're back here. And this one is still empty, so keep this in mind. Down here, you'll notice you have navigation wraps around, and what that means is if I push the key combination that I have set up to switch between desktops, I can continue hitting that key combination and go just keep going between them. If I don't have this particular option on, then what will happen, I'm using super control right to move to the right desktop, and now I can't move any further. I have to use super control left to go back. So I prefer to have that on. Below this, that's the little animation you're seeing. You can change it to slide or fade desktop. So if I change it to fade desktop, you'll just notice it just kind of fades back and forth. Alternately, you can turn that off and have no animation just a jump cut. So we'll turn this back to slide. I kind of kind of like slide. Show on screen display when switching. What that is, is you'll notice when I hit right, you'll see that new desktop, the new desktop and desktop one, that is the on screen display. And show desktop layout indicators, that is the little box below that. So if I turn so show desktop layout indicators off, all I'll see is just the new desktop and desktop one label. But uh, I kind of like it, so I'm gonna leave it on. If you're finding this video useful and you'd like other Linux tips, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Now that we've done that, there's some things we want to discuss. First, let's say I go down to this desktop down here that has my Fedora Firefox in here. There's a little symbol right here. If you click that, it will now appear on all desktops. And so you'll notice I have it here, I have it on the bottom desktop, I have it on the first desktop, and that's that's on every window now. So it used to be a little circle, depending on the version of KDE Plasma you have, it may be a little circle. I think the pin is actually new. I literally updated today and this changed. Sometimes there are reasons that I want it on multiple desktops. I don't use that very often though, but it is a nice little feature to have the ability to kind of have this on all your virtual desktops. One thing you will need to do to actually make some of this functionality work after you've set it up is to go here to shortcuts. And if you type in desktop and go to Kwin here, you'll see a lot of different shortcuts and you can get to switch to desktop one, two, three, four, five, six. You can get to desktop to the left and right. That's what I set up. By default, for some reason, and I'm not a huge fan of this key combination, the default one it tries to give you is meta or super control and then up or down or left or right. 
I noticed in Manjaro, it is control alt left and right. So that's just something to keep in mind. This may not be the ideal key combination for you. It kind of depends on what makes the most sense. Just make sure it doesn't interfere with anything else. But if I wanted to go up and down, all I need to do is turn this on and I'm gonna go on and go to the one for up and I'm gonna turn this on and I'm gonna apply. And now I can do control meta or super and go down, up, and I can, you know, or I can go down twice and I can get back to this just because I have that wraparound turned on. But that's what I had to do to get these left and right cooperating from the start. These were not actually turned on before that. By default, they seem to be off. These I think were on. There's also next desktop and previous desktop. Other tip I wanted to show you here. If you have a window that you want to move between desktops, you want to set up these shortcuts right here. And by default, it'll be meta control shift and a direction on the arrow keys. So if I say super control shift and right, I've now moved to that desktop. And you'll notice now I'm back on the original desktop and that screen is still over here. It's meta control shift or super control shift, depending on which terminology you prefer, and then the arrow key for the direction you wanna go. And these are the ones you'll wanna set up for that. Obviously you can make this a simpler key combination if it's something you think you're gonna do often, or you could do something like move to desktop one. So maybe you wanna say, let's say control, or let's say super control F1, and we'll apply that. And I'm gonna do, go ahead and move this over to desktop two once I've clicked back in the window here. So now if I say meta control F1, it did not work. Oh, it did work. Okay. So yes, it did work. But what it did is it didn't transfer me to the desktop. So now you'll notice if I go ahead and I say super control shift right, I am now on desktop two over here to the right. If I say super control F1, it, I'm gonna get a blank desktop. I'm still on this right desktop, but my window got moved to the left. So I have to do super control left to get back. That's what happened on that. But there are a number of other key combinations here that you can set up. I don't know that some of them, it all goes all the way up to desktop 20. So, I mean, if you wanna be with that person that has 20 virtual desktops, I mean, I guess you can. I don't know what that would look like. Obviously, if you're gonna have more than one or two rows, you really wanna make sure this is a bit bigger so that, you know, they're not little dots. They're, they're really kind of small. And let me show you what happens if I go back to, I think it's this one and virtual desktops. So let's go ahead and delete this one because I, I only want one row right now. I want to apply that. It's gonna look a lot better. See, this is much easier to notice down here if you're gonna use these. Do you use virtual desktops in your workflow currently? Do you have any tricks for virtual desktops or Plasma in general? Leave them in the comments below and maybe we'll include those in a future video. Thanks and have a great day.